hey girl hey welcome back to my channel it's your girl misha thank you guys for joining me yet again for another review we are back with a brand new merit at first sight season 14 episode 8 striking a balance if you're new here then welcome i give lighthearted reviews with a little bit of laughter and a little bit of shade and a whole lot of detail if you're back for a second or third time then welcome back y'all please don't hesitate to like comment and subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content okay you obviously getting some because y'all keep on coming back so please like this video for me or don't like the video thumbs it up or thumbs it down honey just do something with the thumbs on the on the screen okay now let's get into it if we gonna get into it when the episode first opens up day 11 of marriage so we see katina and elijah Wan. baby he cooking okay so she must have been putting some good stuff on him okay she must have been putting it down. Mark and Lindsay, Michael and Jasmina, and Steve and Noy followed my advice and got a pooper scooper. Okay, Steve, so you don't have to pick up the poop of it all. So then we see Evelina, aka Alyssa, putting on lip stank. And Chris saying that he asked for a divorce because she had zero try in her. She had something in her. She was full of something, but it wasn't try. Noy and Steve. So Noy is working. Steve is not. <laughs> Oh, Steve. So he comes out of the bedroom. He's like, hi, you want some breakfast? No, she wants you to get to work, buddy. If you're freelancing, get to the freelancing of it all. He said after he found out about how uncomfortable she was about him not working, then proceeds to say, you know, I want to make her feel comfortable, but I don't plan on picking up a job. Um, so how were you going to make her feel comfortable? Maybe you need to reveal the savings amount. Maybe you need to tell her exactly what your plans are. You got to tell her something. Because, I mean, you can cut the unworkable tension with a knife. Moving forward. So they start talking about the housewarming of it all and what they plan to make. And he says to her, he said, I didn't understand the severity of me not working and me working on my own terms. She said, you know, I'm just nervous because I'm thinking about long term. I'm thinking about children. I'm thinking about things like that. So he was like, well, you know, I've worked really hard to get where I am. And just because I don't work for a company doesn't mean that I won't get money. I, I get money, money, money. I, I, shout out to 50 Cent. <laughs> Maybe Steve said, don't worry about it. I might not sit in the cubicle all day, but I'm going to get this sh money. Shout out to Cardi B. Okay, uh, Steve, if you're going to get some money, honey, you say you're going to get the coins, then the coins you shall get. She's like, well, how do I fit into this, you know, as your wife? I mean, like you're doing things on your own. He said, I'm responsible. I have savings. Okay. So now he's let us know that he does, in fact, have a savings. He's like, and when I need money, I know that I can go get it. I just didn't just quit my job and I'm just figuring it out. Uh, actually, that is what you did because you're just figuring it out. You said, I'm trying to figure out if and when I want to work. Figure is the operative word. But that's just a side note. He just needs her support. That's all he said. She said, you know, I just really love the fact that he wants to do things on his own terms. But I just want to know if he has a game plan. And I think that's fair. I don't think it's too much to ask to say to my husband, hey, okay, so you quit your job. Cool. You don't want to work for them? That's fine. You want to get out of the rat race? Understandable. But what are we going to do moving forward? Exactly what is the next step? So that I feel comfortable so that I'm not thinking, well, what if this job falls apart? Then we're screwed. Like, just tell me something. That's all he has to do is communicate and everything will be fine. Katina and Elijah Wan. Elijah Wan is doing a little workout and his friend Jeff joins him. He said his friend's a mentor and he has a successful marriage and he has kids. Okay. That's the friend that was at the wedding. That's very reassuring to know that he's surrounding himself with other married men. Hopefully his friends are not into cheating and all that crazy mess. Hopefully they have their head on straight. So Elijah Wan is saying that Katina is just like him, just the female version. And he's telling him about the fact that Pastor Cal said, you know, go ahead and lay it down. His friend was really surprised that they haven't gone there yet. He was like, yeah, I'm just really surprised. This is the first girl that has ever made Elijah Wan nervous. That's because he was pretending to be somebody else. That's exactly why. O must be nervous that he won't deliver. All that talking ain't hitting on nothing. That's exactly what I think. Because Tina seemed like she going to enjoy it either way, child. So just go and set yourself off. Like Nike said, just do it. Moving forward. So they talk about where things are going. And he said he saw one red flag. And that was when Katina went to the grocery store and came back with a loaf of bread and water. Girl, what in the last supper is happening here? Not a loaf of bread and water for 15 people. <laughs> Maybe Katina said, I ain't got it. A loaf of bread is $5,000. But girl, if you're going to go to the store to get some groceries, honey, groceries. 
imply that you're going there for more than one thing. Child, I am done with you. He said, you know, I was just wondering if she even knew how to shop. He said, she told me that she's used to shopping just for herself and not for two people. Even if that is the case, you still know how to buy more than just bread. Girl, make a list before you go to the store. What don't you have in your home? That shows me that you do not cook because people who are able to make a list, they know what they're missing. They know what they need to create a meal. Honey, even if you were bringing home some noodles, honey, just bring home some. Ooh, ooh child, let me not say noodles. Buzzword. Child, noodles is gonna be a point of contention a little later on in the review. So child, let's continue to get into it as we get into it. So Jeff is telling Elijah one, I used to be the same way. I used to only go shopping for myself. So maybe she just needs to warm up to the fact. Jeff is so reassuring. He's really reassuring Elijah one that listen, cause Tina and that wig, they gonna do what's best for you. So hold on just a little while longer. Moving forward, Mark and Lindsay. So he's throwing the ball around with a friend and he said the best thing about Lindsay is having someone to come home to. Now, I don't mind him saying that, but what else do you like? What do you like about her? What is the best thing about your relationship besides having another warm body there when you get home? So then they start talking about Lindsay's red flags and he said, you know, when he met her, it was different and Lindsay will like say things in public and she doesn't really think before she speaks and that's a turn off. Like she was getting her Lindsay on, on the plane and Elijah one didn't like that. Lindsay has to learn when to turn it off. She has no emotional maturity in social settings. Like she literally says the first thing that comes to her mind, honey, and he don't like that. I don't see these two making it because she's too much of a loose cannon for him. He's going to end up in some type of barroom brawl, end up behind bars, messing around with Lindsay. Lindsay, you can't just pop off whenever you feel like popping off. Day 11 of marriage, Jasmina and Michael. So he goes to visit his sister and he's coming over to ask for some advice because, you know, him and Jasmina, they have been having a few ups and downs. So he tells her about how it started in Puerto Rico, but then they had some conflict. He said, yeah, you know, we have a lot to work through. So his sister is explaining to him that Jasmina doesn't know him and she's still getting to know what he likes and what he doesn't like. And he doesn't know what her past has been. He doesn't know what she's gone through. And he shouldn't take offense because she's just protecting herself the best way she knows how. I love that sister. Y'all know how I feel about Michael's sisters. I just like them. And this one right here that just keeps showing up on the scene when they need a sister to stand in, she is so level-headed. The fact that she's expressing what Jasmina might feel. Now, granted, I have some different feelings on that. I don't feel like she's protecting herself. I feel like she's snappy. She's a snappy turtle. And I also feel like her and Michael are the same person. That's what I really feel like. I feel like they're literally the same, but I love how she sees it from Jasmina's perspective. And she's not like, well, you're my brother. So you're obviously right. I like that. He said, oh, okay, so she's protecting herself because she doesn't trust me to do it. She said, no, she doesn't know you to do it. You have to prove that you can do it first and then she'll trust you. All right, sister. Alyssa and Chris. Dr. Viviana said that Alyssa and Chris decided to divorce after 10 days. So they have to break the news to family, which can be equally as painful. I think it's going to be fine. It's been 10 days. Child, can't miss what you never had. But go set yourself off. So Chris calls his mom to FaceTime her over the computer. So child, he was like, you know, I'm just very sad and it's disappointing. So he's telling us that it's going to be painful to tell his mom because she's always wanting him to get married. Well, guess what, Chris? I am sure that she's going to be happy that you aren't being mistreated by anyone. Yes, you want your children to get married and have beautiful grandchildren for you to throw up and down and then send them on back home. But I would rather my child be treated properly more than anything. So he starts explaining things to his mom and how Alyssa wouldn't even be with him and didn't want to share the hotel room. He said she kept using the word robbed. She was like, oh, seems like you were the one that was robbed and she was just there for her 15 minutes. Mama. You better speak your speech. Child, Chris's mama said, and you ain't fooling me. I said what I said, and I ain't changing it. I know that's right, girl. Baby, you can't pull the wool over mom's eyes. Chris said, you know, I'm just really pissed off because I'm trying to figure out how Alyssa felt during this whole thing. She ain't feel like nothing. Chris said, I'm just wondering if it was purely physical. His mom said, it sounds like it. <laughs> yes, it sounds like. It sounds like she did not want to be bothered. So then he said, you know, I just basically told Pastor Cal when he came over that today is my decision day and I'm choosing divorce. So she said, well, it seems like she did you a favor. Like, do you want to spend decades with a person like that? He said, no, mom, he wasn't even going to make it decades. Okay. You meant minutes because child, as soon as she said, I do and gave him a kiss, she was done. 
moving forward. He said, I do feel a lot better about myself and it's going to really take me some time to get over it. Oh, Chris, at least you didn't invest too much time with this dirt bag. Okay, that's what we can be thankful for. It was only 10 days, child, 10 days too long. Katina and Elijah Wan. Her and her friend are having a little girl talk and she asked Katina's first impression. She said, you know, I had a good first impression. The friend was like, okay, well, what about the garter dance? And she was like, you know, it was a bit much, but I liked it, but I didn't like it. I mean, but I liked it. Baby, Katina gonna stand 10 toes down for her husband. She said, well, when we sat down at the table, like the little sweetheart table or whatever, he showed me that I didn't have to carry a conversation. Oh, yes, ma'am, honey, you will never have to worry about that because he talk enough for the whole cast, okay? So the friend was like, oh yeah, um, he will definitely start a conversation. Like he was talking a bunch of fluff when we talked to him and he went off like on this tangent and I didn't know how to really take it. She was like, he was talking so much. It was like, he didn't want us to ask him questions. She said, now I know you already talked to him about this, but did you address the fact that he's never dated a black girl? Really? Baby, when she said that, I said, no wonder he was acting like Katina was an ancient artifact. Child, he was just looking at her. Can, 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 can I kiss you? Can, 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 can I kiss you again? It's okay. Chocolate doesn't melt in the rain. <laughs> Child, I'm done. So they show us where Elijah once said he never dated the black woman because they weren't attracted to him. Elijah one, quit playing in my face, honey. You must really think we are boo-boo the fool. Okay, you weren't attracted to them. Your preference was not Katina. That's why you set up here and said you want to try something new. So Katina is like, well, you know, he's half Irish and he has a mohawk. Girl, what does that have to do with the price of tea in China? What are you talking about? He has a mohawk and he's half Irish. And what does that mean? She's like, well, he looks black. Katina's like, well, we know that. The friend said, well, does he know that? I know that's right, friend. So Katina's getting defensive. And she's like, well, you know, we talked about it, girl. Don't you think I would know? I'm the one that's married to him. Well, honey, don't get mad. Okay. She's just trying to figure out if you see the red flags are waving. Child, she's just being a friend. That is a major change. She just want to make sure that you aren't an experiment. Her friend is waving a red flag for her to see child, but she can't see over that daily wig. Day 12 of marriage. We see the couples preparing for the housewarming parties of it all. Michael and Jasmine are in there searching for seafood because they're going to make tacos. And he's making a joke with these lobsters and she's looking like she could care less. <laughs> Baby, this good. Child, this season. Oh, honey, it's getting progressively worse. Child, this is a fool. In the next scene, Alyssa appeared on my screen. Girl, bye. She was talking to her friend and whatnot, and the friend wasn't even there. Moving forward. Oh, and just a side note, Alyssa will get nothing from me but dust. But she did say that she was going to boot scoot and boogie right on down to Texas. We do not want your ass in Texas. Please keep it over there in Boston. She said, I have to ask my psychic, Cleo, beyond the grave. Please advise her to stay in Boston. Moving forward, Jasmina and Michael. She says she's coming over to talk to her friend about her and Michael. The friend has been engaged for eight years. Girl, not you talking to this woman with this lifelong engagement, but girl, go and set yourself off. So she starts talking to her about the wedding and she told her that the honeymoon is where it took a turn for the worst because he used a tone. The friend was like, oh, you do not like any tone. She's like, yeah, don't talk to me with a tone. Talk to me regular. Ugh, that was kind of a tone right there. So then she starts talking about the surprise female roommate, which was foul. Michael was straight up foul for that. And she's like, well, maybe he thought that it would upset you, but didn't realize that it was going to make things worse. So Jasmina is like, and another thing though, he does not like to admit when he's wrong. She said, well, that sounds just like you. Yes, it does. They are one in the same. Both of them got a little lying problem and neither one of them likes to admit when they are wrong. She's like, well, I am very seldom wrong. Case in point. Lindsay and Mark. It's the day of their housewarming. Her friends ask how they're adjusting. And she's like, well, you know, he's overwhelmed and stressed and I just need him to communicate with me and just tell me what's going on. Meanwhile, Mark is asking how to tell Lindsay not to get into it with others in public and how to change her tone when speaking to him. The theme of this season is your tone. It's the way that you say things. Elijah Wan be getting out of pocket. Jasmina be getting out of pocket. Michael gets out of pocket. Lindsay lost her damn mind this episode. The woman who shall not ever be named, she lost her mind. And then there's Chris, Noy, and Steve. Child, this is a mess. Anywho, so they're advising him that he should let her know how it makes him feel when she does that. So his friends are telling her that Mark is ready to move in after spending the night with one woman. That's very interesting because it's the total opposite with Lindsay. He wants to run far, far, far away and fast. 
So her friends are like, you know, as far as Lindsay, she's going to be fiery no matter what. That is not okay. Fiery is the reason why she had to come on Meredith first sight because she can't find nobody to sit down with. That is not okay. Day 13 of marriage, Steve and Noy, baby. So they're cooking together, right? They're making their cultural food and people start to arrive and they had to be in the hallway because how all of y'all arrive at once? Next thing you know, they open the door and a gang of people just flooded in. They're like, oh guys, welcome. <laughs> I'm like married at first sight. Really be thinking I'm crazy, honey. So they're asking Noy if she envisioned Steve. She's like, well, you know, I went in with no expectations, but when I saw him, I was pleasantly surprised. So her friend brought up the fact that they got each other the same gift. And I was wondering why they didn't show them giving gifts. I thought they just stopped doing that, but they actually did. And I thought that was sweet. They actually cut that part out. But the fact that they both gave each other a journal, I was like, okay, come on connection. So then her friend asked about them having kids and Steve said the crazy part about the kids is she wants a hard three. No one, no two, but it has to be three. He said three isn't the deal breaker. It's just the fact that she isn't flexible about it. Noi going to have to bend a little bit because life happens and you might not get three. I don't know what kind of alternate universe you live in that you can just snap your fingers and just miraculously be at three. Like what if you have triplets and then you get pregnant again and you have one more what if you have one and can't ever have any more girl be realistic and stop being crazy so then her friends take steve to have a little chat so they ask him what the future looks like for them and he said getting married and having a wife and kids is really important to him so is being financially stable steve as much as i like you it's not just about you anymore you have to be more vocal with your wife and tell her exactly what your plans are so that she's not fearful. I'm not saying he can't make money. Okay. I want y'all to really hear me when I say that. I'm not saying Steve cannot make money. I'm just saying that Steve needs to verbalize to Noy that this is my plan of action. You cannot just fly by the seat of your pants freelancing or not. Okay. That's not the point. So they're asking Noy what are her issues and she tells them that she has concerns. She's like, I've never been in type to not work so I think about the kids and I think about the future and I'm just wondering how he's gonna show up for me so his friend was like well he has a vast network and he has one that he can tap into my company alone they're hiring for sales engineers all the time she said oh, okay well in her confessional she said that's alarming to me because he has this vast network like people who want to employ him but you're making a choice to not be employed lazy Okay, I'm not changing that. I don't care how many reviews I do. Steve is giving me lazy. I feel noise concerns are very valid. Like kids cost money. Okay, I'm just gonna say this to y'all. I too am going to be a part of the great resignation, honey. They ain't getting nothing else out of me. Okay, nothing. But I wanna say this. I also have a plan in place. That is what he needs. That's what he needs to tell her. I'm going to do this for this amount of time. And then I'm going to do this for this amount of time. And then we can dead this whole conversation child. Cause it's getting on my nerves, quite frankly. So her friends are like, well, you know, Noy was an immigrant and she's worked so hard to where she, to get where she's at. And she knows that you had a job, but you don't have one now. And she doesn't want to be primarily responsible for finances. So Steve replies by saying, it'll never get to that point. Oh, okay, Steve, well, let them know. He said, you know, it's hard when the person doesn't believe in you or has doubts about who you are and possibly may never accept you. And he wants to be with someone who believes in him and sees him for who he is. He said, I'm a very adventurous and trustworthy person who can take care of all of our needs and still have my spontaneous life. Because if I can't have that, otherwise it's not going to work for me. Okay, Steve, I hear ya, but you can't fault her for wanting to see. Okay, you can't fault her for wanting security. Like to me, it just seems like you plan on taking it day by day and that's not going to work. You need to write out your plan and express it to her because right now you looking lazy, okay? And you don't want to work. Jasmina and Mike. So they're setting up for the housewarming and Michael was like, can you imagine us setting up? Had Pastor Cal never showed up to talk to us? Yes, I can. She will be yelling, Michael, I am not your enemy in the middle of the party. <laughs> The two of you will be fussing, being passive aggressive. You will be thinking she cutting you off, child, and she cutting onions. She not even talking. It will be a whole reckless fool. So thank goodness Calvin showed up when he did. So it's Michael surrounded by women, and they decide to play charades. Child, this is a mess. But Jasmina's team won. So her friend asked how the marriage was going, and Jasmina said, you know, it was rocky, but we hit the reset button. 
So his sister was like, girl, show me around. Show me everything. It's a living room, a bedroom, and a kitchen. And the end. <laughs> so Jasmina takes Michael's sister around the one-bedroom apartment, child. And in the bedroom, she's telling his sister that she likes him. She's like, I really like Michael. He's very sweet and kind and gentlemanly. Okay, what exactly did Calvin do to them? Off camera, honey, because this is a complete 180. Just last episode, Michael. You gonna sit here and call Michael. You gonna call me a lot. You are aggressive. Okay, child. I guess everything's everything. So his sister was like, I was wondering what was happening because he said he wondered if you even liked him. She's like, I do like him. You know, I was just annoyed. Like after so many things happened, I just couldn't find nice words to say about him. So Michael is asking for advice out there with her friends like he liked to do. And her friend tells him to be patient and to listen to her. And she's like, you know, she can be petty. So you need to attack the issue at the core because she will go back and forth and forth and back with you all day long. Trust me, I know, because she does the same thing to me. On the inside, his sister is telling Jasmine, you know, I'm just happy he has a strong woman because he isn't that way. So he needs someone that's strong enough to like take the reins. His sister said that he has a huge heart and she wants Jasmina to protect it. Child, I don't know. As far as Jasmina and Michael are concerned, I'm completely confused. We will just have to wait until decision day and see if they say yay or nay. Moving forward. Katina and Elijah won. So they're getting ready for their housewarming party and Jeff shows up. He's like, woo, this chicken looks good. Who made it? She's like, me. Girl, I know a restaurant or store buy chicken when I see it. <laughs> Girl, what is this dry mac and cheese, child? Ain't got no pool to it. So then her friend shows up. I was like, Elijah Wan only got one friend. That sounded about right. So her friend was like, you know, when I met him, I was like, oh, I do not like him. Well, we all said that, but you know, he's starting to grow on us like a bad fungus. So they're asking about how it's going living with a man. And she's like, you know, it's been hard because Elijah one is like always on a 10. So Katina tells them that they haven't been intimate. They're focused on having a natural connection. So her BFF was like, uh, I don't like that because sex is important to her. Katina needs to speak up. Okay, if she lets him dictate everything down to the sex, he will. Speak up if it's important to you. I don't know if she's afraid that he might not like her anymore. I don't know what it is. But honey, I'm here to tell you, if you've been wearing the same wig for 14 consecutive days, then he's going to like you at the end of it all. It's going to be okay. So they put him in the hot seat. They ask him how Katina is doing as a wife. And this boy going to say, oh, she has effort. Wow. Not an A for effort. Boy, you got your nerve. He's like, am I perfect? No. They're like, oh, okay, well, don't put pressure on her because she is trying, okay? So Katina is over there telling Jeff that she's seen him at his worst and she's just like, I just say, okay. Whatever he's saying, I just say, okay. Well, baby, that's the oldest wife trick in the book. Katina might be all right after all, honey, because when the husband gets the fuss and you just look at, okay, honey, yes, dear, mm -hmm, absolutely, and do the exact opposite. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. But she did say she just okay him, honey. Jeff said, well, you know, I feel like Katina is really awesome with him because she's very patient. Katina, be patient, but don't let him walk all over you, holding it in until you explode. That's going to be terrible. You need to make sure that you are voicing your concern. Do not lose your voice. I cannot stress that enough. I don't know if you're listening to these reviews, and I don't know if you care to hear what I have to say, but I'm here to tell you. Please don't lose your voice. That is the worst thing that you can do. So Elijah Wan is over there with her friends and he said that he has to work on his delivery. Yes, because you begin to live it beside yourself, Isaac. So they're telling him that he has to consider her feelings as well. Okay, this wasn't that bad. I just don't want to lose herself. Elijah Wan needs to remember that Katina is all in. Okay, and he needs to remember her in all of this. But her friends warmed up to him, so I guess it was a success. Noi and Steve. So then we see Steve, it seems like he's sitting in the hallway. And every time they do a visual like that, you know it's about to be some mess. So let's get into it. So Steve tells us that Noi offered to cook, right? Nice gesture. And he says she has some gluten-free noodles and he had his regular noodles. So he went into the bedroom. He comes out and hers are on the stove, but his are not. So he was like, look, these are not on the stove yet. Let me help you out. So he puts them on there. He goes away. He comes back. He checks on them. And when they're finally done, they're overcooked. So she gets upset that he said that they were overcooked. So Noi goes to the door to grab some sushi, puts on her backpack and bounces. Baby. So he said, I'm calling her, no answer. I'm texting, no response. 
Noah is mad about that job. So everything that Steve is doing is annoying her and she's acting out. She is not directing her anger the right way. Girl, you mad because you're working and he isn't. And in your eyes, he's seemingly complaining. Your communication sucks. If you have a problem, say it straight up. Listen, I have a problem with you not working. That doesn't sit well with me. And right now you're annoying me. And that's what I really feel like it is. She's annoyed because he doesn't work. So Steve tells us that Noy spent the night somewhere else and she won't talk to him. Girl, leaving your husband over pasta is not the move. It definitely is not right for you to sleep away from your home and not tell him where you were. Because let me tell you something, a lesser man will start to form these scenarios in their head. You could have a Jose, okay? And lock your ass outside like he did Rachel. So you might want to have a little bit more respect for your husband. Girl, you can't just pick up and leave and no communication for 24 hours. Be a big girl and talk. How on earth are you going to have three kids when you get mad over soggy pasta? Girl, you're going to have a long road ahead of you. So she finally shows up there, right? And Steve tells her, listen, you can't leave me hanging. I went to sleep and I woke up and I had hoped after I woke up, you'd have sent me in text. But instead, I woke up to a subliminal message on Instagram. Nor that is so childish. You are not ready for marriage, point blank in the period. That is childish. Airing all your dirty laundry on social media, you one of those? Oh, okay, child. If this don't work out after decision day, baby, it's gonna be some piping hot tea all over Noah's Instagram. And y'all know I'm gonna be watching. So she's like, well, this is the first time that I cooked. And I just felt like it was rude what you said. And that's not the first time that you've said something rude to me. And she's very immature. She's very immature. She processes things like a high schooler. Girl, it's pasta. It's going to be okay. He said, okay. So there is healthy communication and that's not a healthy response to what happened. Child, she would have never come back if she was married to Jose from last season. After how he spoke to Rachel, the pasta's overcooked. That's what you're upset about? Really? He's like, if you're mad, communicate that. He said, you don't leave me hanging for 24 hours, then post on social media. If this is your idea of space, this is unacceptable. I really love how he's articulating things to her. He's not getting elevated in his tone. He's not being disrespectful. He's just speaking his speech directly to her and letting her know exactly where he stands. Now that is effective communication. He's like, my friends and family follow you. Now they're going to be coming at me and asking me questions. So you think that's okay? She's like, yeah, I probably should. He said, no, you definitely should have not. Not probably. You definitely should have not done that. Oh, child. I'm thinking some different things about Steve, honey. I know that's right, honey. You let her know, Steve, no jobs. Moving forward. Day 15 of marriage. Chris is telling us that they're all going bowling. It's the first time that him and Alyssa will be telling everyone they're done. Child, I knew that day one of the honeymoon, honey. The honeymoon from hell. You mean you will be opening up your mouth and finally confirming? Okay, well, let's see how this goes. So they all get together to go bowling. Noah's like, you know, I'm a little bit upset still with Steve about our disagreement. Girl, you overreacted about those soggy noodles. Snap out of it. So they're bowling. Okay, Elijah Wan, I see you with the new husband haircut. Okay, oh, I like it. I really do. He's like, well, I'm going to start me a league. And so Katina was like, oh, the candle pin bowling. And he was like, yeah, you going to support me? Katina's like, of course. He said, okay, with the pom-poms. She said, pom-poms. He said, okay, so somebody's never been a cheerleader. <laughs> Katina, you don't know what pom-poms are. Sometimes I feel like Katina's head is in the clouds, honey. That head and that wig, just in the cloud. Don't know what's going on in any given moment. The second mom gave you the jersey, so you're halfway there, child. Because he was like, you're going to put on this jersey and have these pom-poms? So she's like, well, I'll have a sign. He said, okay, I guess that's close enough. These two right here, they are a mess. Actually, I think Katina and Elijah Wan might make it. He just needs to effectively communicate. She needs to watch out for the red flags and not lose her voice. She needs to pipe up and speak her speech when need be. And he needs to understand that she is a not a doormat and she is not here to be barefoot and pregnant. She is to be loved. And I think they'll be all right. Moving forward. So then Lindsay shares that she introduced Mark to tacos for the first time. So everybody's like, what? You never had tacos before? So Katina has an attitude. I'm like, girl, what is wrong with you? Because Steve had asked Lindsay, did you blindfold him? And she was like, I might take this into the bedroom. So she was kind of making a joke about it. I'm like, what are you getting an attitude for? He asked her. Like, it didn't make no sense to me, but okay. So Katina goes, well, this man has never left the toilet seat up. So Steve is like, well, do you want the toilet seat down because you don't want the sanitary flush or, and so Lindsay chimes in and she's like, I'm going to step in as a nurse. 
Lindsay, just one second, honey. Just give me one second. Jasmina's like, okay, girl, but let him finish. So she continues to give the fact that it sprays six feet in the air. So then Steve finishes his question. Lindsay, calm down. And they're like, well, we don't want to fall in. That's our biggest thing because I have fallen in toilets before and I don't want to fall in. So then Lindsay was like, for me, it's just the thought that poop is spraying in the air. Like, Ugh, it's just disgusting. So everybody just looking. Lindsay, you have some control over yourself. Sometimes just wait until the other person is finished talking, then proceed. I can tell that this group just does not like Lindsay. As a collective, they don't like her. Like, and Mark seems to be embarrassed by her. Like what she's saying isn't wrong. It's actually right because you should flush the toilet with the seat down, not just the seat, but the lid down. You should flush the toilet that way. But it's like Lindsay couldn't wait to interject. Like she just cuts people off and starts talking and it's off putting. Like she doesn't know when to cut it off. Anywho, just then Alyssa and Chris show up. Why? Why? They didn't have to make an announcement. They could have just disappeared and then, you know, shown up at the reunion. Ta-da, we got divorced. Like, it really didn't have to happen. But okay, she's here. So let's see how this goes. So Lindsay asked about everyone's Pastor Cal's visit. I'm surprised they actually answered, child. Elijah once said he learned not to talk at a person, but talk with them. And Katina's like, but guess what? He didn't say nothing about me. He didn't say nothing about me. So Lindsay was like, well, that says a lot. So Alyssa said, because you're the best. And Katina was doing this thing. I don't know what this was all about. She was like, mm-hmm, I am. Believe it, girl. I am. What is this? Like, I didn't understand Katina in this moment. What are you trying to do? Like, like really, what is going on? So Jasmina said, well, when Pastor Cal came to see us, he ripped us a new one. He asked us to leave things in the past. And ever since we've been doing good. So Lindsay said that she read somewhere that you can't have intimacy without conflict. Now, I don't know where you read that, honey, but they are all the way to the wrong. Okay, all the way wrong. So Katina rolls her eyes. So Lindsay said, why you keep rolling your eyes? Katina said, girl, I don't want to have another argument with you on camera. Girl, you know what it is. Stay over there. Oof. So Mark gets embarrassed. So Steve said, Chris, so uh, what about you guys? Because then he's trying to break the ice. And Chris is like, well, you know, we landed on getting a divorce. And um, it's going to help us with maximum happiness. <laughs> oh, Chris, the way he explains things. You got to love it. Moving forward. So Steve said, well, I can't say I'm surprised, but it's a reality check because, you know, me and Nora, we just had a major blow up and it just shows us that we could potentially be. Y'all had a blow up over pasta. This woman couldn't stand him. She said he was aggressive and that she hated him. I think you guys are fine. Let's continue. So Alyssa starts lying and crying while everyone looked on like, girl gone. Anyway, like I told y'all, she gets nothing from me. So they're bowling and Lindsay asks, what's up with you, Mark? Because like he was kind of acting funny. And he said he didn't like the way that she spoke to Katina. She's like, okay, so now you're mad at me? He said, I feel awkward when you say that. Lindsay is like, so you don't think that this woman rolling her eyes? He's like, listen, given your history, you shouldn't have said anything to her. She's like, so who are you here for, Mark? Just who are you here for? He said, I'm here for you. She said, you literally saw her roll her eyes. He's like, that tone is going to piss her off. So why are you trying to piss her off? All right, y'all. This is going to be my unpopular opinion. But this channel is called My Opinion, and so I'm going to give you my opinion. And this is where I stand. So she can be rude to Lindsay, but she isn't allowed to say anything, like at all. Like, she did nothing to warrant that attitude. That's what I'm thinking. And if it were me, I would have asked too, because that was rude as hell. I would have been like, girl, why are you rolling your eyes while I'm speaking? Because when she was speaking, everybody was just sitting there listening. And I thought that that was rude, but that's just me. He said, when we're out and you do that, it makes me uncomfortable. We're a team. If you can't get that, then this isn't going to work. Well, baby, what'd he say that for? She said, no, I'm a team. I was there for you putting on my hazmat suit, missing a day of work to help you move out of your chaotic life. So then he walks away. He's like, yeah, have another drink. She's like, go call your mom and ask her to unlock the door. So both of them are like, you know, shooting jabs at each other. And Mark said, you know, I just can't get with her. Like she can't let things go or bury the hatchet. Like I can't fall in love with that. Well, the same can be said about Katina. She can't let it go either. I thought that everything was fine. I mean, Lindsay apologized to Elijah Wan and I thought that everything was cool. I don't know. Child, so then Chris goes over to Mark because he's sitting on the steps. I'm like, child, Chris is like, I can finally offer some advice. <laughs> well, go on, on, Chris, and tell us what you got. Lindsay is in the restroom and a producer goes in. She's like, okay, I think I'm done. I'm sorry, you cannot be a strong man. You make 60K a year selling gym memberships? Uh, what is wrong with selling gym memberships? 
If you don't like it, then go find one of your little crappy engineers and be with them then. Child, it's like she was kind of looking down on Mark, and I didn't like that. Like, don't turn your nose down on an honest day's living. I don't like that, Lindsay. I don't like that at all. So she's drunk and she's saying everything on this hot mic. It's embarrassing to both of them. I know she thinks she's outing Mark, but at the moment you're making you and Mark look a complete fool. I just hope that you know that. Meanwhile, Mark is over there telling Chris that he can't catch feelings for Lindsay if she's like this. He was like, if she told me she was out, I would be like, okay. Ooh, child. So in the restroom, she's like, I'm out. And when I'm out, I never get back in girl please so she's like tell me one wife that will put up with this not Alyssa please stop mentioning this girl's name honey we're never gonna get rid of her please stop mentioning her name so she starts screaming to the top of her lungs so everybody can hear her and then she takes it too far she's like the least you can do is give me the big O she said you know you wanted to pull back because you have small balls I don't need you go back to your roach infested apartment I don't need you go call your mama okay here we go First of all, Lindsay. Lindsay is the black sheep of this cast. Nobody likes her. I mean, she just is. Secondly, Mark, never correct your wife in front of everybody, honey. You put on a united front. She asked Katina a question because she was rolling her eyes. And I am certain that if the tables were turned, Elijah one would be sitting right there and letting Katina speak her speech. I would have asked her too, but that's just me. I get that you're a man that doesn't like confrontation, but at some point you have to read the room. Nobody likes your wife. So she needs at least one person and that would be her spouse. I do understand that after a while you get tired of defending Lindsay and that mouth of hers, but you seem like a people pleaser. Okay. And now that I've gotten that out of the way, let's get into it. Lindsay, the donkey of the day goes to you, girl. Not only did you emasculate this man, you sat there and told every bit of trusted information you had on him at the top of your damn lungs. And might I ask, what is wrong with making $60,000? I guess me and Mark both broke then, huh? Oh, oh my gosh. How many of y'all are broke? Please comment down below and tell me if you make $60,000 or less. I didn't know that was struggling. Well, that's just me. I knew you were going to use what you did for him and to help him on Mad Day. I knew it. I called it a mile away. And the way you became unhinged is exactly who you are and why people don't like other people doing things for them. And that's exactly why Mark didn't want to let his guard down and completely relax because he saw straight through you and he knew you was going to do this. There's no coming back from what you said. It's a wrap. You said he was a broke gym rat loser, a mama's boy with no motion in the ocean. He's sexually incompetent and he has roaches. Okay. He may as well pull a Chris and make this episode his decision day. Cause I would definitely be divorcing you after what you said. You were waiting to empty the clip. Girl, I would never want to deal with you again. Never. You cannot be trusted. And to add to that, I would never want you doing anything else for me. Because the way that you just spewed out all of this negativity and this vile stuff against this man because y'all had one disagreement, that was disgusting. I will be done with you. I will be done with this show. And also, he probably can't hit the G spot because it's full of liquor. Put down the bottle, sis. Put it down. Child, and that was the end of the episode. I would never talk to Lindsay again. When I tell you never... For you to put out all my business and he trusted you with that, I would never want to have anything else to do with her. But that's just me. I don't think the two of them need to be married, period. He's always bringing up her drinking and she's always bringing up him having less than her. And it's quite frankly, I feel like she looks down on him. I'm going to go back to South Boston and live the good life and you can go back to your mom. That's not cool. Y'all comment down below and tell me exactly what you thought about this episode. I have to figure out which day we're going to have our live. It's probably going to be on Saturday, but I'm not too sure. Try y'all tell me exactly what y'all thought between Lindsay and Mark getting into it. Noy and Steve arguing over the oodles of noodles. Honey, I don't know, but all of this is just a train wreck and it's too much for me on a good Wednesday night. Please do not hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And as always, stay safe, stay blessed, spread love, not germs. Peace.